All right, guys, so now we're going to talk about graphing. And I want you to think of graphing in their simplest form as a way of just visually showing your data. All right? Really interesting example here. Take a look at that Snapple you might be drinking right now. How much of it is actually tea? It's hard to envision it by reading the ingredients, but putting it into a graph form kind of opens your eyes to that. A couple other ones. These ones are just sort of for fun. One of my favorite ones right here. I love this one. How much pie I've eaten, how much chocolate pie I have not yet eaten. Or you can look at these other ones and um, you know figure out Billie Jean. Is she a girl who claims that I'm the one? I don't know. I just don't know. Um, or heard uh, Hey Jude. Here's a couple other ones. Uh, where does Marvin Gaye get all of his gossip? It must be through the grapevine. If you're looking at these and you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's because you were not born in the 80s. That's okay. It's okay. It's all right not to be born in the 80s. These are all very old songs. You should look them up. All right, so <laughs> that aside, how do we know um, what kind of graph to use? This is the biggest thing that I run into with, with uh, freshmen, not just freshmen, but anyone's school. What, when do I use a line graph? When do I use a bar graph? A lot of times we just kind of fake it and we all use bar graphs. But if we get technical about it, there's actually a way that we pick it. It's like saying, uh, let me read through this quickly. Is the independent variable quali quantitative? Yes, if it is, then it'll go to ordinal. No, then it isn't. Then uh, is it blah, 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 blah. This right here, um, what does it all mean? It's kind of complicated. Uh, it is a technical way, but I'm going to show you the easy way. I love finding the easy way to do things. And here's the easy way. For the three most common ways that we're going to graph, if it's a line graph, you need to be tracking uh, changes over time within a group. That group could be a single person, it could be a baseball team, but it's the same team, the same person. So if you want to track your grades over the semester, you would connect each dot every week with a single line. That single line shows that it's you, just one person. Bar graph, on the other hand, you're tracking changes within different groups over time. So instead of just looking at your grades, it's your grades compared to you know five other people in your class. Or in compare, instead of just comparing one baseball team, you're comparing them to all the other teams in their league. Uh, so you don't connect the lines because that makes it look like you know uh, your grade is the same as someone else's grade, or or you know that your grades are exactly the same thing, and and it's not. You're two separate individuals. So that's when you use a bar graph. And of course, the, the pie chart is probably easiest. The pie graph is easiest to figure out when to use. Anytime you have 100% of something and you want to break it up into little pieces, little pieces of pie. Use a pie chart. Uh, all the other types of graphs that you learn and use over the years, scatter plots, stuff like that, they're, they're all kind of the same idea. Scatter plot is just a line graph where you essentially pick the best fit line. And we may talk about that later in the year, but there's your three basics. OK, so there's a few other things I want to talk about dealing with graphs here. So I'm going to make a nice little graph here. Not too bad. Um, first, you need to know your x's and y's. So this axis right here is your x. And if you're the kind of person that has a hard time remembering this, here's my trick. Uh, if you know one of them, then you'll know the other. And I always look at this one as being, ooh, it goes a y all the way down there. The y, because that tail of the y goes straight down just like that axis does. Okay? So there's a, here's a, the stuff I really want to talk about, though. On the x axis down here, whenever you make a graph, you always put your independent variable which means over here on the y-axis, you always put your dependent variable. So remember that um, last lecture we talked about pebbles, my dog, dry food versus moist food, which one does she like? And I chose, remember the i and independent variable, I chose dry food versus moist food. There. And then over here I could say, well, how much does she eat of each? We can measure it, you know, d dependent variable, what we're trying to figure out, which one does she prefer? We can measure it in one gram, two grams, three grams, four grams, five grams, all the way up to see which one she ate the most of. Make a little bar graph, right? So your independent variable is always on the x. So i, v, x. Your dependent variable is always on the y, d, v, y. Right? So it's maybe one way of remembering it. Uh, the other thing I want. To, uh, to talk about. I'm going to kind of redraw something up here. So ignore my big graph, but if we redraw this, you know how a graph is always an L shape? Well, it's actually, you're actually just looking at this part of the graph. 
Right? If you think about math class, I think a lot of you have probably talked about this in math class before. When you go up your y-axis, those numbers are always positive. If you go down below where it intersects, those are always negative on your y-axis. And on your x here, if you go to the right of the intersection, those are your positive x numbers. And if you go to the left of your intersection, those are your negative x numbers. So it just so happens that most of the time when we graph stuff, we're graphing in the positive. You know, your dog doesn't eat negative 4 grams of food. That would be very weird. So you go in the positive there. Dog ate 4 positive grams. Okay? So we're always dealing in this in this quadrant is what they're called. This quadrant with the positives. But if for some reason, and you will see it this year, we get numbers that are in the negative, well, you might be graphing down here. You don't turn these into negatives. Your negative one would be right here on the y-axis. Your negative 2, your negative 3. And you could graph down in here if you had to. Or maybe same over here. Your negative 1, your negative 2 on the x-axis and so on. Okay? All right. So that's where we'll end about talking about graphing. We'll do a little practice in class. Bye-bye.